The global electric car boom is spiking this year. I mean, electric car sales have grown by 30%. That's not a small number. And that's having a big effect that I don't think anyone's really talking about, which is the EV boom is increasingly curbing oil demand worldwide. In fact, some experts believe that contrary to popular opinion, oil has already hit its peak and is heading down. Some people say that's um, too optimistic, but actually, it might in fact be correct. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And guys, I'll be at the Melbourne EV Auto Show on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of June. I'll put a link in the description below. You can use it to get a $10 discount off your tickets. The world's growing fleet of electric vehicles is starting to meaningfully curb oil demand, says the ProgressPlaybook.com, according to new data from the International Energy Agency. In 2024, the global stock of electric cars displaced more than 1 million barrels every single day of oil consumption, according to the IEA. That equates to roughly 1% of total demand for oil, which is also used to make plastics and tires and all kinds of other things in addition to fuels. By 2030, EVs will displace well over 5 million barrels of oil per day, equivalent to a nearly 5% reduction in total oil demand, with China responsible for about half that amount. Now, those numbers sound good, but actually I don't believe they're correct. The IEA constantly underpredicts changes. They're very conservative. I think that number might be closer to 10 million barrels of oil per day, which would be 10% of oil demand. Electric models already account for close to 60% of new car sales in China, and that share is expected to reach 80% by the end of the decade, I predict 100%, thanks in part to government incentives that encourage people to trade in fuel guzzling cars, which cost you money for EVs. In addition, two thirds of electric cars sold in China in 2024 were cheaper than the conventional equivalents even without incentives, meaning it's simply cheaper, more affordable to get a, either a plug-in hybrid or a fully electric car in China now, meaning it won't be long before 100% of China's sales are fully electric. And I, say, I think the, therefore you can see that these numbers from the IEA, probably a little bit pessimistic if anything. Globally, the share of electric cars in overall car sales will exceed 40% in 2030, based on today's policy settings, says the IEA. But that number could be much, much higher. And by 2035, with, with internal combustion engine bans in Europe and many other countries around the world, that figure could be drastically higher. It could be close to 100%. While the United States was previously expected to be more or less in line with the global average, President Donald Trump's efforts to stymie the shift will see EVs reach a mere 20% market share in the world's biggest economy in 2030. I mean, that said, it might not even be the world's biggest economy in 2030. It'll take a long time to fully phase out the internal combustion engine cars already in use, though, in some places. However, it might be quicker than you think, considering looking at Norway, who are already at 98% EV adoption, it's only going to take them around 11 years. Despite the country's EV sales surge, only one in 10 cars in Ch on China's roads is electric, but in some places that figure is actually above 50%. So it'll take a little while to phase out internal combustion, but as the price of fossil fuels, or as the price of gas goes up, which it will, in line with reduced demand, think about it, right? There's gonna be all these gas stations around the world and they're all gonna be saying, well, hang on a minute, we've got less cars coming here, we're gonna to have to charge more, otherwise we go, we go to business. When they go to business, what happens? There's fewer fossil, there's fewer, fewer gas stations around, fewer petrol stations for you to go to. And that will simply be like a virtuous cycle that will speed up adoption of EVs. Road transport accounts for slightly less than half of global oil demand, meaning aviation, shipping, plastics, and other products will continue to prop up oil demand until non-fossil fuel alternatives are deployed at scale. As a result, oil demand could edge slightly higher still, although I don't believe it will. And in fact, China's largest oil company says that's unlikely. The IEA thinks consumption will plateau at around 106 million barrels per day over the next couple of years. And then 
go down every year after that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I've been saying for years now that fossil fuel companies are in big trouble, but um, the big trouble that I expected could be much worse than what I expected. In fact, could be much, much worse. New York is going to fine fossil fuel companies $75 billion. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I'm sure you know this, but big banks, they're kind of reluctant or extremely reluctant to fund new projects like uh, drilling for more oil or projects that are mining in seas and all this kind of stuff. So it's getting harder for these fossil fuel companies to get the funding they need, especially the smaller companies. Basically, don't be a genius idiot and try and invest in some penny stock oil company or something. They're all internal decline. Sure, you might win tomorrow and then you'll lose next week and you end up losing everything. Anyhow, New York is reporting that it will find fossil fuel companies a total of $75 billion over the next 25 years to pay for damage caused to the climate under a bill Governor Kathy Hochu signed into law on Thursday. The law is intended to shift some of the recovery and adaptation costs of climate change from individual taxpayers to oil, gas, and coal companies that the law says are liable. The money raised will be spent on mitigating the impacts of climate change, including adapting roads, transit, water, and sewage systems, buildings, and other infrastructure. Hopefully also in encouraging people to stop burning fossil fuels and get an electric car. And solar could be good too. New York has fired a shot that will be heard around the world. The companies most responsible for the climate crisis will be held accountable, said New York Senator Liz Kruger, a Democrat who co-sponsored the bill in a statement. Fossil fuel companies will be fined based on the amount of greenhouse gases they released into the atmosphere between 2000 and 2018 to be paid into a climate super fund beginning in 2028. It will apply to any company that the New York Department of Environmental Conservation determines is responsible for more than 1 billion tonnes of global greenhouse gas emissions. Now, you can apply these same rules to companies like General Motors to Ford, some of America's biggest car manufacturers. So they should certainly be concerned that they will be liable. Now remember in New York, they have laws that are really good laws, right? You're not allowed to sit idling your diesel vehicle or any vehicle, to be honest, unless it's an EV and there's no emissions. You can't sit and idle it in many places in New York because uh, people are smart enough in New York to know that that causes cancer. It does. Uh, if you don't like this information, unsubscribe because you're an idiot. And a lot of people don't, but it's true. It causes cancer. 